the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear sisters and brothers, as we gather together this morning in the very place where Blessed Mother appeared to Jacinda, Lucia, and Francesco, we are so blessed to be here this morning to celebrate this Holy Mass. So we offer all of our intentions, we especially pray at this Mass for Lorraine and Carol, all the intentions that we carry, all the intentions of our, my fellow priests here, and we ask the Blessed Mary to intercede for all of us, to bless all of us, all of our intentions. The main message, as we know, of Our Lady of Fatima is called to repentance and penance and transformation of all of our lives and inviting us to pray the rosary daily for the conversion of souls, souls in in, um, those who have turned away from God. So let us especially ask Blessed Mary to intercede for us. Let us offer all our intention, especially for our own transformation of our own hearts, our own lives, so that we might be faithful to God and say yes to God, as Blessed Mary reminds each one of us. So let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Father, you have given us the mother of your son to be our mother also. Grant us that by obeying the appeals of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may always work through prayer and penance for the kingdom of Christ and attain eternal happiness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated. A book from the reading of the reading from the book of Numbers. The whole congregation of the children of Israel arrived in the desert of Zin in the first month, and the people settled at Kadesh. It was here that Miriam died, and here that she was buried. As the community had no water, they held a council against Moses and Aaron. The people contended with Moses, exclaiming, Would that we too had perished with our kinsmen in the Lord's presence. Why have you brought the Lord's assembly into this desert where we and our livestock are dying? Why did you lead us out of Egypt, only to bring us to this wretched place which has neither grain nor figs nor vines nor pomegranates? Here there is not even water to drink. But Moses and Aaron went away from the assembly to the entrance of the meeting tent where they fell prostrate. Then the glory of the Lord appeared to them, and the Lord said to Moses, Take your staff and assemble the community, you and your brother Aaron, and in their presence order the rock to yield its waters. From the rock you shall bring forth water for the congregation and their livestock to drink. So Moses took his staff from its place before the Lord as he was ordered. He and Aaron assembled the community in front of the rock, where he said to them, Listen to me, you rebels. Are we to bring water for you out of this rock? Then raising his hand, Moses struck the rock twice with his staff, and water gushed out in abundance for the people and their livestock to drink. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you are not faithful to me in showing forth my sanctity before the children of Israel, you shall not lead this community into the land I will give them. These are the waters of the Meribah, where the children of Israel contended against the Lord, and where the Lord revealed his sanctity among them. The word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his heart, 
heart and not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, for, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tested me. They tested me through, though they had seen my works. If today you hear your voice, on the harden not your hearts. Alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what it was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her whom God has called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord, May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, the message of Adimus, we know, is a call to repentance, healing, forgiveness, reconciliation. And I believe saying no to God and God's will is sin. So, as we heard in today's gospel, I would like to reflect a little bit about saying yes to God. And that's what Mary reminds us in today's gospel. Mary said yes to God from the time, especially from the time of Annunciation to the cross, from Bethlehem to Calvary. And that yes seemed to be a very small word, but had very big consequences. If you think of all that Blessed Mary had gone through in her life, it's amazing the things that Mary, Blessed Mother, had to face. Mary said yes to God, and that was not a one-time yes. She had to say that yes over and over. Every day she has to renew that. It is easy to say when things are smooth in our life, when things go well in our life. But when Mary did not understand, did not know what life was about, when things were rough, when Mary could not see the light at the end of the tunnel, she continued to say yes. And I'm reminded of a gospel passage of the court official who came to Jesus, asking Jesus to heal his son. And Jesus assured him and sent him back, saying, your son will live. And the gospel says the official walked about 20 miles from Cana to Capernaum to his home, only with the assurance that his son would be healed, his son would live. He walked only 20 miles, but Mary did that walk 
believing in God's word for 33 years. If you look at Mary's life, we see that yes, constantly being renewed in her life. Mary, we, we know, was fully pregnant as she go to, Jer uh, as she go to Bethlehem, that long journey, difficult journey, no place to give birth to her son. Soon after her son was born, being hounded by Herod, Herod wanted her son's life, Jesus' life, so they had to run to exile to an unknown land, to Egypt, to become a refugee in a foreign land, to find a place to live, find some work. Some of those who have moved from one country to another knows what that means. Some of the people whom we know, maybe some of us who have gone to a new place, the, the, the struggle, the challenges to start new in a new place. And the Holy Family later had to come back to Nazareth, coming back to homeland, reconnecting with the family and maybe f trying to build a house, starting a new life, finding a new job. Then we hear about Jesus being lost in the temple at the age of 12. All the pain, all the agony of that mother, the heartache of Joseph and Mary, and they went three days, not able to find Jesus, not knowing where their son was, not able to communicate with a teenager. Still, Mary did not understand it. When they found Jesus, Jesus said, I should be doing my father's will. Mary did not understand it. But the gospel says she pondered, and she said yes. Some point in between, she lost her husband, Joseph. And all the memories, all the grief and the sorrow and the pain and the loss that she experienced, the tears, the loneliness, everything that in a house reminding her of Joseph, her husband, not understanding what God's plan was, she still said yes. The emptiness, the pain of her son leaving her home as she was getting older, someone who was supposed to take care of her mother, now he's starting his journey, his life, his ministry, as he moved out, she maybe left alone there, felt lonely, another loss in her life, did not understand. She knew her son needed to leave, but she did not always understand it. And then we hear Jesus preaching in her hometown, and Mary goes to see Jesus. Mary wants to get closer to Jesus, and Jesus says, who is my mother, who is my brother, who is my sister? It sounds like a put down, a message telling her mother, his mother to go home. But Mary knew, it was not an insult, that her glory was not primarily that she was the biological mother of Jesus, but she had always been called to obey the will of God. She didn't understand that, but she still said yes. And Mary followed Jesus in his mission, and as you know, the rejection of Jesus, the plan to kill Jesus, her son getting into trouble, and all the agony and the pain as a mother she might have been going through. And then the gospel says she stood by the cross when Jesus died. She walked with Jesus, but at the end she stood by the cross. Mary standing by the cross, sharing that pain, that sorrow, that grief. Mary needed to be there because the only comfort, the only consolation for Jesus on his way to Calvary. When he was on the cross, his mother was there with him. Dear friends, it is easy to say yes when life is smooth, when things go fine, but difficult when we experience tempests and troubles, sorrow and grief, uncertainty, not knowing what the future holds for us. And Mary did that. And thinking about Mary's yes to God, and continually, even during all her life, with the good and the bad and the difficult one, one thing that we always remember is Mary didn't understand, but she treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. So today, as we celebrate this Mass and are reminded of you know, all the sins and in, in, inviting us in this holy place to pray for the reparation, people, those who say no to God, and then we have Mary who said yes, didn't understand, but faithfully listened to God and said yes. So let us ask today for the grace to say yes when we do not understand, when things get difficult.
but trusting in God and loving God to lead us. Here at this most sacred spot, where the most blessed Virgin Mary appeared, let us present our prayers to God our Father, who gave us the mother of his Son to be our mother. For all the faithful, that by obeying the appeals of Mary, in a spirit of true repentance and prayer, they may work wholeheartedly for the renewal of the world and for the kingdom of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who exercise sacred ministry in the church, that they may be attentive to the word of God, love it and proclaim it with fidelity and enthusiasm, as Mary did, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who govern nations, they may work for justice and peace in the world and harmlessly collaborate in the just distribution of earthly goods among all the inhabitants of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer, that in union with Mary, consoler of the afflicted, in the loving care of others, and in the contemplation of the cross of Christ, we may find courage to face life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here present this day, as we pray for our families, our nations, that by the intercession of Mary, those who seek Christ may find him, sinners may be converted, young people may open their hearts with enthusiasm to the gospel of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And God of infinite goodness, attentive to the supplication of your people, and with the prayers of Mary, mother of your son and mother of the church, to help us. Listen to our pleas and increase our faith. We ask this through Christ, your Son, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we are to see the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, till become our spiritual drink. Brothers and brothers, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father.
Lord, we offer you this gifts of reparation and of praise, so that in celebrating this feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary, you may ab absolve us from our sins and guide our wavering hearts. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks as we celebrate the feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary and praise you for your gifts. She, receiving your word in her immaculate heart, merited to conceive him in her virginal womb, and in giving birth to the creator of the world, she prepared the birth of the church. She, in receiving at the foot of the cross the testament of divine charity, received all men as her children, born to eternal life through the death of Christ. She, when the apostles were awaiting the coming of the Holy Spirit, the promised one, united her supplications to the prayers of the disciples, and thus became the model of the supplicant church. She then finally elevated to the glory of heaven, surrounds with her maternal love the pilgrim church, and lovingly directs their steps to the heavenly dwelling place until the glorious coming of the Lord. And so with all the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all who have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. Do never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to the setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts be about you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, I do command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed words, Mary, Mother of God with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints and whose content in terms of your, your presence, we relay for for our unfolding hand. May the sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church honored. With your servant Francis of Pope, all our bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you gain for your own. 
Listen graciously to the prayer of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. May we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord, having received this with joy, these heavenly sacraments, grant us, we pray, you that they may lead us to eternal life, where we may rejoice forever with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son, and Mother of the Church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go for the Mass he sent to love and strengthen one another.